Hello students, welcome to another tutorial on mechanical properties of matter. In this video, we continue looking at fluids at rest. We start by looking at the first question I let you guys in, in the previous video. So this question is a little bit interesting, just to get a term really, it's concepts that we've already seen already. Now, now in this video, of course, they're talking about absolute pressure. So I hope you guys have had time to go through this question, you've attempted it. If you haven't, you can pause the video and then just try out this question or at least understand exactly what they're asking us to find. Now, I always ask my students to go through the question at least twice. The first time when you're reading the question, you're trying to find exactly what the question is asking you to find. The second time when you go through the, the question, you're trying to see what the question, what, what information the question has given to you to use. What do you have at your disposal to actually find what they wanted to find? That way, it'll be easy for you to create uh, a strategy that you're going to use to work out the problem. Okay, now assuming you've already gone to the question, you know exactly what they want you to find. Let's dive right into it and see how we can approach this. So the best thing about this question is they actually tell us what we have to do in the first question, in the first sentence. They tell us what they want us to find. They want us to calculate the absolute pressure. Now, what is absolute pressure? Well, think about it like this. If you have a fluid, let's say in a container, let's say something like this. So now if this fluid, let's say it goes up to that point, let's say this is water. And this water, all this, all up to that point, this is all water in a container. This can be a pond, it can be a jar, literally anything. Now all that, let's say they want you to find the pressure at this point. Well, there are two things that, that you can be asked to find in general pressure at that point. You see, you can be asked to find the pressure due to the fluid itself. So you really want to pay attention to the language that the question is using. If they want you to find the pressure due to the fluid or due to the water, let's say this is water, let's say this is water. So if the question specifies that find the pressure due to the water at the depth H. So let's say from here up to that point, that is H. So at a depth H, the pressure at that particular point is going to be given as the density of water, gravity, and that depth. You see, this expression gives you the pressure at the depth H due to this particular uh, fluid. Now, in this case, this is water, that's why I'm specifying that. This is my density of water I'm using. If it was a different fluid here, what you'd put here as your, um, your, your density would be the density of that particular uh, fluid. So in this case, they're asking you to find the pressure due to the particular fluid or a liquid or water in this case. But if they ask you to find the absolute pressure, then they're not asking only for the pressure due to the, due to the water here. They are also asking us to take into account uh, external pressure. Or generally, they're asking us to take into account everything, all the pressure that is coming towards this point has to be accounted for. In this case, the most common one that, have, that, are going to, that is going to be included is the atmospheric pressure. So they want us not only to look at the pressure due to the fluid, but also take into account the atmospheric pressure, the external pressure also acting towards that particular direction. So we have to get all the, in other words, we have to get the net pressure here. So how does our expression look like? Well, to the pressure of the fluid, of the water in this case, we have to add that external pressure P naught. This is what will give us the absolute pressure at that depth. So this is what absolute pressure is all about. Now, with that in mind, let's go right ahead and work out our, our problem. Now, the same we calculate the absolute pressure at the bottom, at the bottom of a freshwater lake at a depth 27.5 meters. Now, this, the first part, so they're telling us the depth H that is given as 27.5 meters. What else are they saying? Well, the next part, assume the density of water is 1.00 by 10 to the power three uh, kgs per meter cubic. So they're saying we they want us to take the density of water as uh, that's 1.00 by 10 to the power three kgs per meter cubic. And lastly, the question goes on to say, the pressure, the air above is at a pressure of 
101.3 kilopascals. So the air above, so they're telling us the atmospheric pressure is at 101.3 kilopascals. Now, is there anything else? That's all they've given us to work out huh? the first part. So here, this is all the solution for A. What are we doing here? So first and foremost, this is kilopascals. So this becomes 101. So kilo just means we're multiplying by a thousand here. So this becomes three with two zeros there. This becomes a pascal. So if you're not comfortable with the pascal, you can just have a Newton pair meter squared there. We know a pascal is equivalent to that unit. So take note of this, you guys. This is a common um, multiple choice question where they'll ask you what, uh, what you need or what basic units combine to make it to make a pascal. So you have to just, of course, remember to say a pascal is made by a force over over distance, over area squared, over area. So area will come with units of meters squared. Force will come with newton, with newtons, and then the newton you can break it further to get there. The SI units that actually make the newton itself. So yeah, you can actually break this up to get a kg a meter and a second squared. So now this comes here, of course, you can make it, then combine this to get the units that actually make the pascal. Okay, back to our question. Now, of course, since we have everything we need from the question, we want to find the absolute pressure PA. So this then, all we need, the atmospheric pressure plus the pressure due to the fluid, which is the density of water, gravity acting on water and the depth. So the atmospheric pressure is given as 101300. Since I'm using standard units throughout, I can drop the units. I know they'll simplify to give me the expected unit. So this is plus the density of water is given as one by 10 to the power three. So that is just 1000. Multiplying gravity 9.8. The height given as 27.8. 0.5. So you can simplify this and add up. Now, if you're not sure about what is happening to the units, you can keep them there as well and try to work it out and see if they'll actually simplify to give you what is expected. But they should play out to give you that. Okay, so if you simplify this, you expect to find 307, not, not 307, sorry. You expect to find 370,000. 800 pascals. So of course you can write this in scientific notation as 3.71 by 10 to the power five pascals. The decimal point has moved five places. Okay, so this is pressure, so it is going to have pascals. So this is um, this is the first part. So from here now, the question goes on to ask something else out of us. So that now they're saying what force is exerted by the water on the window of an underwater vehicle at this depth. So now they're they asking us to say, well, if at that particular point, so if we, we tried to sketch what we're looking at at that point, so we can actually even go on to the next page for this. So they're saying, if this is the water body, and then we have just found that the pressure at this particular point is that PA. Now, if you have a window here, let's say this is our window. So if you have a window and then the question is saying, let's assume this window is circular. What is the force acting in at this window? Given the diameter of the window is uh, 35 centimeters. Now, if we assume that this window is circular, that kind of gives us a way of finding the area of the window. So if it is circular, then we know that the area of, of a circle is just going to be pi r squared. Now, how does this help us? Well, we know that pressure is equal to force over area. Now, since we know the pressure that is acting at our window here, that pressure is actually just the absolute pressure we just found in the previous step. So it's going to be the absolute pressure is equal to the force acting um, on this window divided by the cross-sectional area of this window. Remember, in using this formula, the force and the area, they are actually perpendicular. That's why I draw my area at something like this. Okay, now, apart from that, from here, we're going to cross-multiply 
So we're going to end up with the force acting on this window to be equal to the absolute pressure we found in the previous step, multiplying the cross-sectional area of this window. Now let's go back to the area. We just saw that since this window is circular, we can get its area by pi r squared. Now we don't know the area, but instead we're given the diameter. How, how do we extract the area? The, we don't know the radius, what are given is the diameter. How do we get the, the, the radius from the diameter? Well, the radius is just equal to half the diameter. And the diameter is given in centimeters. So first and foremost, we take that diameter to, um, you can take it to, to, centimeter, to, to meters. It is given in centimeters. It goes to meters. We divide it by 100. It becomes 0 0.35 over 2. So this now becomes our, our, our radius. So first we converted the diameter to meters. It became 0 0.35 meters. And then we divide this by two to get our, to get our radius. Now our area will be equal to pi. Where we have R, we're going to have 0 0.35 over two. But remember our radius has to be squared. So you can simplify this just at this point, but I know if I did that's going to give me a very, very uh, long number with a lot of decimal places. So I, I'm, I kind of don't want, don't want that at this point. I'm going to keep everything and they just work it out at the end. So when I substitute my area and my, my pressure, what I have from the previous uh, example, the previous question, this is 3.71 uh, by 10 to the five pascals, multiplying the area, it is pi, and then our R is 0 0.35 over two, but then this is squared. So if you simplify this, what you get is going to be 3.57 by 10 to the power four Newtons. Okay, so um, we've come to the end of this question. I hope you guys uh, were able to, to follow through. I hope there are no confusions. But of course, um, I'd like to hear from you guys. You can leave a comment in the, in the comment section below. How did you find this question? Were you able to work it out? If you did, well, I've got another another one that I want you to, to try out. If not, where did you where did you struggle the most? And did the video actually help you uh, work out your particular question? Yeah, I'd like to hear from you guys. Otherwise, in the next question, we introduce the concept of um, we introduce the ideas uh, of uh, uh, Pascal's principle. Want to see what what it states and how to how to apply it to work out uh, to work out some some examples. So we're going to work out a question that I left you guys with again in the previous video. So this is the question that we're going to work out using using Pascal's principle. Okay. So yeah. Uh, otherwise, leave a like if you if you like this video if you found it helpful. Otherwise, we'll see you guys in the next video. This was your tutor.